Hey, welcome to 12 Tone. Today we're going to talk about Blackjack, Canasta, and Miracles. These are all names for scales based on the work of George Secker, who was attempting to reconcile the concepts underlying modern music with the radical experimental work of theorist Harry Parch, inventor of the Genesis scale. We've talked about this before, and if you want a full explanation, I recommend checking that video out, but to summarize as briefly as I can, Parch felt that modern music had been corrupted by the concept of equal temperament, which is basically the idea that if two pairs of notes look like they're the same distance apart, they should sound like it too. For instance, this, this, and this are all major thirds, and while each one starts on a different note, the actual sonic distances between those notes remains the same. That sounds like a good thing, but there's a reason Parch didn't like it. Everything's out of tune. You see, when we hear notes, what we're really hearing is a sound wave with a specific frequency, and when we hear multiple notes at once, our brain calculates the ratios between those frequencies, which is what we hear as distance. Whether those notes sound good or bad together depends primarily on how simple those ratios are. The 2 to 1 ratio gives us an octave, and 3 to 2 makes a perfect fifth, generally considered the two most consonant intervals, whereas a harsh sound like the tritone uses the much messier ratio 25 to 18. In equal temperament, though, we don't get any of those nice simple ratios. Well, except for the octave. We keep that, but for the rest we get approximations, and in some cases not very good ones. The 5 to 4 ratio of a major third should sound like this, but if you played it on a piano you'd hear this instead. Okay, that may not sound very different, but to a theorist it's a big deal. In order to get our beautiful consistency we need to sacrifice our perfect ratios, and Parch didn't think that trade-off was worthwhile. Instead, he developed what has come to be known as the Genesis scale, which he built out of pure whole number ratios. The Genesis scale is what's known as an 11 limit scale scale because its ratios only use numbers up to 11. For instance, it has 3 to 2, 7 to 4, and 11 to 9, but not 13 to 12. Actually, technically some of its ratios do include numbers larger than 11, but that's only to keep things within a single octave. Parch's scale includes the ratio 11 to 10, but he also wanted to include the upside down version, 10 to 11. This note is below the root of the scale, though, so to fix that he brought it up an octave, multiplying the frequency by 2 to get 20 to 11. It's still the same interval, just flipped around a bit. Parch also included some extra more complex ratios to fill the larger gaps in his scale, but Secker didn't seem to care about those, so we won't either. Anyway, that's the fastest I could explain Parch's work, but let's move on. Secker wanted to find a way to approximate the Genesis scale using, wait for it, equal temperament, Parch's nemesis. Yeah, I'll give that a moment to sink in. Okay, technically his approach was based on linear temperament, which is kind of the next best thing, but in order to understand the difference, we first have to talk a bit more about intervals. Normally, the smallest interval we deal with is the half step, which is exactly one twelfth of an octave, but on the scales Secker was working with, the half step is huge. When we're dealing with small differences like this, theorists like to use a unit called a cent. There's a hundred cents in a half step and twelve hundred cents in an octave. They're too small to actually hear, but they give us a really precise way of describing the differences, between very similar intervals. Got it? Cool. Anyway, back to linear temperaments. These are systems of tuning that are based on what's called a generator, which is a single interval that you use to construct the entire scale. For instance, in our normal tuning, the generator we use is a slightly flat perfect fifth, which is 700 cents wide. We pick a starting note, like this D, then go up 700 cents, which takes us to a new note, A. Then we do it again, which brings us to 1400 cents total. That's larger than an octave, though, so to keep this from spiraling out of control, we bring it down, subtracting 1200 cents and leaving us with 200, giving us the note E. Then we go up to 9 900 cents, or B, then to 1600, or 400 cents F sharp, and so on, until we finally make it back to zero and start all over again. Because that cycle is closed, this is an equal temperament system. However, not every generator actually makes it back to zero. Pythagorean tuning is based on a completely precise perfect fifth, which is a little less than 702 cents wide, and no amount of cycling through will ever get you back to where you started. In these systems, you usually just pick a point where it's close enough and then stop. This creates what's called a wolf interval, which is a generator interval that's a different size from all the others, and you usually try to bury it somewhere in the scale where it's not likely to be played all that much. For instance, Pythagorean tuning's wolf fifth sounds like this, and it's usually hidden between the flat five and the flat two of the scale. Anyway, Secker's goal was to find a generator that could very closely approximate every ratio in Parch's 11 limit scale, and after some experimentation, he eventually settled on an interval of roughly 116.7 cents, a unit that has since been named the Secker in his honor. This is slightly larger than a typical half step, and depending on how deep you want to go, it can yield some very interesting results. If we just pick a root and go up a secker at a time, we get this which I've seen called the Miracle Scale, although that name will come up again later. This is a simple 10-note tuning scale with a pretty large wolf interval at the end. This bit here is almost 30% larger than a normal secker. If we add another octave's worth, we get this 
a 21 note tuning system that's often called the blackjack scale, which I think is pretty clever. Going through again gets us a 31 note system called canasta, which is a reference I don't get, but I'm sure is hilarious to Canasta players. The 41-note version is sometimes called Stud Loco, which is another card game reference, because why not? I'm not going to bother playing it, because at this point it gets hard for the untrained ear to tell the difference anyway, and besides, walking up the whole thing a step at a time isn't really the point. We can keep adding octaves from here, but let's just skip ahead to the final form, the true miracle tuning with 72 steps. Again, not going to play it, it just sounds like a weird slide. Anyway, this miracle tuning contains approximations of every single interval in the Genesis scale to within three and a half cents, which is absurdly precise. The smallest difference humans can hear is generally considered to be five to ten cents, so for all practical purposes, it's basically identical. It's also really close to an equal temperament tuning. The Sekker is almost completely indistinguishable from the interval of seven steps in 72 tone equal temperament, which is what you'd get if you took a normal piano, and in between every two consecutive keys added five extra notes. This means that we can just use that system instead and get pretty much the exact same benefits, which I think wraps up this story nicely. We've We've managed to find an equal temperament system that is virtually indistinguishable from the complex scale Harry Parch invented in order to escape equal temperament. And it's based on normal 12-note tuning. It's beautiful, really. <laughs> Sorry, I just... I love it so much. Anyway, thanks for watching, and thanks to our Patreon patrons for supporting us and making these videos possible. If you want to help out and get some sweet perks like sneak peeks of upcoming episodes, there's a link to our Patreon on screen now. You can also join our mailing list to find out about new episodes, like, share, comment, subscribe, and above all, keep on rocking.